Welcome back to Level Up, where you learn how to go from agent to entrepreneur. I'm here with the man himself, Greg Harrelson. We're back. Greg, it's been a long time. You've had an insanely busy summer. So first of all, how are you? I'm doing good, man. I, I tell you, I um, I opened up my schedule and I saw you in my schedule and I got excited this morning. <laughs> Just want you to know. Just want I you appreciate to know. that. You excited me. Yes. I was looking forward to this. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it too. We missed our we missed our last one. We were supposed to record about a month ago. Yeah. And we had some scheduling snafu and that was like the first time we've been able to record all summer. We were both like, "Well, come on. Seriously?" <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway. So, uh, we've got uh, we got some fun stuff to get into. We're talking about how to create extraordinary results in your business. And as always, you have this incredible uh, insight that you just something that has been percolating. You've been you've been talking about it to some of the agents in your organization. We're going to bring it to all the podcast listeners today. So, let's Let's talk first of all about um, what what do you mean by extraordinary results because it sounds like just a buzzword but I know there's something yeah. much much deeper than you mean by that yeah so if I may what I'll do is I'll just kind of share with you a talk that I had at, at, at this real estate event not long ago in Florida and um, you know I was talking about uh, becoming a, a listing machine just trying to you know share with people like hey this is uh, this is what it takes to list a lot of properties and in my conversation um, you know, I wanted to kind of validate some of the things that I was saying. So I was sharing uh, some of the results that um, that we that we have with the agents, you know, that follow some of the coaching um, in our office. And, you know, where there's an agent, uh, you know, that one of my agents got 184 listings in the last uh, 12 months. And that's just one agent with an assistant. That's not like a team or anything like that. That's legitimately solo agent. Another agent, 174 listings. Another agent, I think 150, 160. I personally did somewhere in that 150 range. Um, and then, and then there was another one. I mean, maybe 130. What, what what I was sharing is, hey, here's five agents that didn't even have a license when they came to the company. That between those five agents, over 1,000 listings in the last 12 months. None of those are teams. These are mm -hmm. solo agents. One, one of them does have two buyers agents but they don't take listings. I was going to say, it doesn't have anything to do with the listing numbers. Yeah. Now, when I said this, I also said from the stage, I said, if I'm sitting in the audience, and let's just assume that I believe what I'm hearing, because it is the truth. Right. If I'm sitting in the, office, in the audience, I would think, wow, that's some extraordinary results. These people are extraordinary but if you're me, who is training people and coaching people and seeing all this, I actually would say those results are ordinary. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that there would be a difference right there. I would say it's ordinary results. Somebody else would say those are extraordinary results. And I totally get why they would say they're extraordinary because they are like unbelievable results. I get it. I said, but these people, these agents are not their result is not extraordinary yeah what's extraordinary is that they followed a simple process consistently every day that then led them to an extraordinary result in other words their result is just a byproduct of of an extraordinary discipline, an extraordinary focus, an extraordinary process. Anytime you bring discipline, commitment, focus, consistency, skills, you do that every day. No matter what you set out, you will create unbelievable results. But I don't think the result is extraordinary. I think what's really as extraordinary is the work ethic, the business maturity, and the discipline of the agent. So let's not congratulate them for the 184 listings. Let's really congratulate them for who they're being as business people, the consistency, because a lot of people will see their results and say, I want those results. Mm -hmm. Greg, how do I get those results? Well, we forget about those results and we wax on, wax off. Remember Mr. Miyagi, <laughs> wax on, wax off. You follow a simple process every mm -hmm. single day extraordinary results. Extraordinary results is a byproduct of ordinary activities. Yeah. Yeah. Which is an incredible insight. Uh, I think we were talking about this before we, we hit record, just that there's a lot of people that want to follow 
a process that's out of the ordinary. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so we're always looking for something new. Um, you know, some people call it shiny object syndrome. Some people are just, you know, they're, they, they just have a need for variety you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. which I think is true. We all have that, that drive inside of us. Um, how do you deal with that? Cause I, I do want to dig into that a little bit. There's a natural excitement in doing something new. It's, yes. it's, it's not something you can, you can't fight it directly. You can't change as a human being. Human beings seek out and crave change, right? So in order to get those kind of extraordinary results by doing an ordinary process that requires this kind of extraordinary commitment, extraordinary levels of, of work ethic and discipline, how do you maintain that type of commitment in the face of your own natural need for variety? Yeah. And Tony Robbins um, really talks a lot about um, a basic need of variety in human beings. Variety is a basic need. And so I, I understand, at least as deep as I can understand from what I've you know, studied it and, and, and listened uh, to Tony Robbins a bunch. And then, it, and so what I say to myself is like, here, I'm not going to cheat myself in my desire for variety in my life. But I want to make sure that I choose the appropriate places to have variety. So I like, so like when we talk about, you got to master repetitious boredom, what is that really? What somebody's really saying when they say you got to master repetitious boredom is like, do the same thing over and over again. We understand it's boring. There's not going to be any variety. That is probably an area in lead generation to not have variety, hmm. but exercise your need for variety in other areas. Like for instance, like I might do an Ironman one month, or then I might do a mountain climb, or I might decide I want to play tennis, or I might want to take up something else completely. Mm -hmm. There's variety. I may want to try out different restaurants. There's variety. There's so many ways to make sure variety is um, that I get the benefits and get the, 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 the um, you know, the joys of variety. Just don't, just make sure that I'm doing it in a way that provides a real benefit to my life, not takes away from my life. So don't resist the urge of having variety. Just make sure you have that in the right place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I, th I think it's uh, one of the, I think you're right in the sense that when you're talking about lead generation, that benefits from consistency. It builds your skills over time. And there's all kinds of other benefits of just relentlessly getting better at that one method and not, not, varying up your methods of lead generation. Now there is, uh, there's something to be said for trying out new methods that could yeah. save you time, could save you energy, could be the next big thing, whatever. So when you, when you spot an opportunity like that, which you did, by the way, you spotted it with Infusionsoft, for example. So maybe yeah. let's dig into that. So how did you still continue to follow ordinary process while experimenting with something that had the potential to do what it's done for you, which is allow you to take those listings without making any outbound cold calls anymore. So that's an extraordinary result by, by most people's definition, right? But you got there through an ordinary process of experimentation with something new that had big potential. So how did you keep your yeah. personal performance the same while experimenting with something new? You know, I just have a rule and that rule is you never let go of your core. Yeah. So you, you have core fundamentals that you can build your business off of never let go of the core. And so, you know, it, and it goes, um, you, you know, let's go back to 2005 and six where everybody was like a developer. Everyone's flipping properties and everything else. And yes, I got involved. I got involved and had some successes, had some losses. But one of the things that, that, that allowed me to stay afloat and not go under is while I was experimenting with developing properties, condo complexes and things like that, I never let go of my core. So when the market dropped out, the, the bottom fell out and some of the projects didn't actually see the success that we had hoped or we thought that they were going to see, I had the cash flow to continue building my business because I never let go of the core. The same thing goes as an individual agent. If, if you, you know, if you're great at working with four soba owners, if you're great working with centers of influence, mm -hmm. then, and you see, gosh, here's a new way that I could generate seller leads off of Facebook, hypothetically, then yeah, it's okay to experiment, but you experiment 
in a different block of time, you still maintain your core structure of working those four Silva owners and you add some time to explore those other opportunities. I always look at it this way. That's an example of an enhancement. You're looking to add or enhance your business versus a replacement. Where a lot of people fail is they see this, oh, I really believe in this new opportunity. Mm -hmm. So they go all in on the new opportunity and they let go of their core. That's called a replacement. Yeah. If you keep your core and you explore this new opportunity, that's an enhancement. If the enhancement doesn't work, then you still have your core. But if you actually go from a, your core to this, that's called a replacement mm -hmm. and the replacement doesn't work. You have nothing. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, and that comes from just not wanting to devote the extra time because we're a lot of times what we're looking for when we look for new things is an opportunity to get out of the necessity of doing the core activities. That's part of why people are they're looking for an escape essentially out of the core. And your mentality is always don't look for an escape. You know, figure out what you're best at, but stick with that. Once you identify that core that is your best uh, use of your time and energy, stick with it. And, and you've talked about this before, you know, in, in the process of going from agent all the way to, let's say, entrepreneur, maybe broker owner, someone who hires and trains agents, you would keep the same core structure. You prospect in the morning, except instead of prospecting for buyers and sellers, you're prospecting for agents. But you, you're, you're very, very strong on like always keeping that core fundamental skill set that the business relies on and always keeping that a central part of your day. 100 percent. You, ha you have to, you know. Yeah. You, you know, it's um, playing the replacement game is a high risk game. It's a very it's a good way to put game. it. Yep. It's a high risk game. And so, you know, but I don't want to be so conservative that I'm blind and have blinders on uh, and miss out on all these new things that come about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but a replacement game is it's kind of like the roulette table. It hits or it doesn't. Yeah. It's it, it's it's boom or bust. There's nowhere in the middle. But if you play the enhancement game, then you're you know, the odds are probably going to be stacked in your favor mm -hmm. and you're either going to grow a little or you're going to grow a lot. But you probably don't lose. Yeah. All right. I've got one question that'll potentially throw you off. So this will not be entertaining for the audience. Uh, oh, before... I love it. I love it. I love <laughs> before it. we do that, what's the best way to uh, to reach out to you? Um, you know, I, I would suggest you just uh, check me out on Facebook and uh, Greg Harrelson and, and hit the message button, send me a message. And I get a lot of those and, and I enjoy some of the comments and questions that I get. So that's yeah. the best way. Uh, do you want to say anything about real estate sales solutions before that final question? I'm glad you asked. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes, please um, check out real estate solutions. My Facebook uh, page, real estate sales solutions. Mm -hmm. I, I put a lot of content out there on that uh, page. And, um, and it's all free videos and just different things that I'm thinking about. And I think you can get a lot of value, but I've also Matt, and I didn't tell you this, but I also, um, started a, um, a group coaching program called the Academy, the agent success Academy, mm -hmm. which is going to be a one, uh, once a week group call where myself, I'm going to get on there and uh, Abe Safa also will get on there. And we have a fairly good schedule of topics. Um, that we're going to be doing. And these are the top six topics that I'm using in my current business to uh, grow the, 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 the big top producers, the big agents yeah. that I do. So um, a lot of things that I, I taught these agents on how to generate so many listings. Those are kind of the things that I'm going to be talking about, as well as buyer conversion and, 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 and different means of generating seller leads. So wow. real estate sales solutions, um, agent success academy, um, you know, that's me. Come check it out. Love it, man. I've known you for a long time. This is the first time I've known yep. you to do anything like this. You've really never offered anything like this out to the public. You've only coached your own agents. So That's right. yeah, if I was in the business right now, I, I would not hesitate. I'd be reaching out to you right now. Cause yeah, well, we'll talk about, we're going to, we're about to record an episode that mm. would not be possible if you weren't in the trenches every day. Yeah. Right. We're going to talk about, we're going to record an episode here in a second about the market shifting and how it's shifting in terms of the conversations buyers and sellers are having that insight doesn't come from you just hanging out and playing tennis. Like that comes from being no. on the phone, no. coaching agents. Uh, so I, I don't know anybody else in the coaching realm and I know most of them. Uh, I don't know anybody else that has those kinds of real time insights that you have about what, what needs to change in, in, in 
agents conversations with buyers and sellers right this second to yeah. get the results. So I just thought yeah, I'd compliment you that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here's the question that I think will throw you off. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay. All right. I want to know, because we talked about the mastery of, bo of repetitious boredom, mm -hmm. how mindful are you? What is your state of mind like when you show up and you've got that two to three hour block of calls, whatever those calls happen to be? Are you, have you done it for so long that you're on autopilot and you don't think about it as much and you can kind of like, you know, half your brain is thinking about the next thing you want to do or what you're going to coach on or yada, yada. And, and is it like that? Or are you, are you immersed in it? because you find variety in the conversations you have with homeowners? Um, I love the question. And the, first, the, the visual that, I, that, that is going through my head as, you're, as I'm really listening to what you're saying is another form of, of, uh, of repetitious boredom is like when I'm lying in bed and I wake up first thing in the morning and I lean up and get out of bed and I go to the shower and I start putting on my clothes, my shoes. All that's boring too. Like I don't get any excitement out of that. But mm -hmm. guess what? I do it every day. I do it every single day. I like just do not leave the house without putting my clothes on. Mm -hmm. My generation time is about like that. Meaning I don't think about it. It's not a conscious thought of like, oh my gosh, it's so boring. I got to put on my clothes before I go out of the house. I don't say that it, like none of that ever crosses my mind. It's it's as if I'm walking like a zombie going through every one of those motions. And then it's not until like a few hours later that I look back and say, oh, I guess I did put on my clothes. Mm. Meaning it's 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 part of my being. That's what I do. Now, it wasn't that way in the beginning. I was wondering the, about that because you started yeah. so, so young. With yes, that. yes. Yeah. And, and, and so I worked with my dad, so he held me severely accountable, hmm. number one. So I had a, I had a, a high accountability environment where this is what we were going to do. I had Mike Ferry as a coach and I had my dad sitting here as, as my partner. And I had all these big dreams that I was claiming that I was going to create in the real estate industry. And they're like, yeah, buddy, just do what you said you're going to do. You said you're going to be here from eight to 11, then be here. And if you're not, then you suck. Right? Like that was in my ear from Mike Ferry, as well as my dad. So lesson is if you want to create habits, a lot of times you can create them a lot faster if you will be willing to be held accountable. So I, I, hmm. I opted into that accountability, right? Because if I didn't, if I wasn't accountable, I probably wouldn't have followed through long enough for it then to become part of my being. Yeah, exactly. So it started with accountability. And then as I, and, and, and let's just say that was kind of like force in a way. It's like, it's accountability. I'm like fearful of like, what's going to happen if I don't do it. Mm -hmm. But then I did it enough where I started to see the light and I'm like, hey, this routine is going to change my family for multiple generations. I connected the, the dots that mm. after I was accountable and I saw the results of doing those activities, yeah. the results were really good. Yeah. It, they, were, they were extraordinary results, but they were really, I was just doing the ordinary, right? Mm -hmm. But when I connected the dots and I did it long enough to actually see the results, then I shifted from I'm just doing this because I committed to it to holy cow, I can't afford not to do this. Yeah. This is going to change the lives of my family for generations. Mm -hmm. Totally resets the trajectory of multiple generations for my family. Then I started doing it out of like, wow, inspiration. Right. And then after I started doing it for many years of, through inspiration and complete joy and happiness, I actually forgot that I was doing it and it just became like putting on my shoes. Interesting. All right. That answers that question. I appreciate you indulging me. <laughs> yeah. um, I have yeah. never been asked that question. That's a good one. I love it. Hey man, that's, that's all. That's what it's all about for me. I yeah. want to ask you questions. Nobody yeah. in the, on earth has thought to ask you. <laughs> that yeah. was a good one. I like it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's wrap this episode up. I think I've actually lost my camera feed, so nobody can see me yeah. anyway. Uh, first of all, if you love the podcast, make sure to go leave a five star review. Just go to Apple Podcasts right now, leave that. Make sure if there's a particular guest that you really enjoyed, give them a shout out in the review. We love to see that. We do read every single review uh, that comes across. And make sure to reach out to Greg if you're interested in the group coaching program, which you should absolutely jump into immediately. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, just reach out to him, Real Estate Sales Solutions. Go to the Facebook. Um, and just reach out to Greg there. So Greg, as always, thanks, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely, man. Great time.